Mugare today because she's an icon that is transgenerational. That she was our first Nobel laureate and senior political leader. She'd walk into a room and everyone would go, oh my God, it's Wangari Mathai, because she would always be telling people what they didn't want to hear. And then she would flash that thousand watt smile and every single person was just putty in her hands. She was, I mean, she was phenomenal. Absolutely the most extraordinary lady. I can hardly believe this September will be four years since my mother departed, but how much new growth we've seen. And I think for that, I must be extremely grateful. But the courage that we need today is to be willing to ask the difficult questions about things that have not been working for far too long and where we have actually colluded with our unwillingness to challenge the structural and systemic injustices that we actually live under. Wangari showed courage in daring to make the connection between the simple but honorable act of planting trees and improving the environment and in promoting women's rights and women's position not only in Kenyan society but women's position in society as a whole. And so I really believe that the more we can create opportunities for cultural expression we create a, a, a stronger foundation for people to then reclaim that which uh, is an injustice in, in whatever form it takes. So it, culture plays a critical role for us at the Greenbelt Movement. We want to hear voices of, um, from Africa and uh, Greenbelt Movement is going to be involved uh, in the New York Africa conference that is going to be in Gabon uh, in August where we are going to have joint voices and joint um, communication on what we want as an African nation. We should never put a moral judgment on this kind of courage is better than that kind of courage and if you don't do this therefore you're not courageous and so on. We have to create multiple ways in which people can enter the climate justice movement. We really need to start seeing real targets from countries towards that. The Greenbelt Movement is at the forefront in Kenya in pushing Kenya to make their, their targets clear. They signed in New York but what exactly does that mean in terms of either trees in the ground or natural regeneration areas set aside for, for restoration? So One thing we're seeing in our work in the uh, inquiry looking at the, what a sustainable financial system would look like is actually saying how could you actually develop a financial culture in which individual financial professionals have that courage to take uh, sustainability issues, climate issues seriously. It's nice to see her progeny, Wangari's progeny, taking up the mantle of her mother and carrying it forward into a future that we can all share. Women continue to do the work that is the Greenbelt Women because it has transformed their lives and it has become a part of their culture, a part of their reality. Everybody who comes to the Green Belt Movement is aware that it's volunteerism and they are doing this for themselves and especially after they have been empowered and trained in the CE which is a community empowerment education. They take it upon themselves and they know it's their responsibility to really just take care of their environment. Using her inspiration, her vision and bringing it to the audience tonight, tonight with the contributions from other people to say, you know, we're in this together, we need to do things for the greater good, not just for our own individual sakes.